Enough of our nonsense. Let's get to our guest. I hear he's waiting. We got a yeah. rock and roll hall of famer in the waiting room when we're messing around here. Hello, friends. There he is. How he are looks, you? He looks better than all three of us combined. Look at this guy. <laughs> How you doing? What's going Look, on, Glenn? We're great. You are. You you're all going on. I miss you, fellas. I know it's been too long. Look at you! Look amazing, man. Oh, been, thank you. You it's found been two weeks since youth, I saw hey, it's, it's crazy. It's a lot of. <laughs> Eddie always tells me that it's a lot of work, but uh, yeah, I try and stay as fit as I can. How is your health, man? You had the heart thing. I mean, you had some stuff. You look great. Tell tell, tell you. how you feeling. How is your health? You're all I'm, good. I'm good. I'm traveling and working like uh, crazy again, which. Is everything to me. I, I, I the word retirement doesn't really is not in my vocabulary. So I'm going to keep going until the fat lady sings. Glenn, you don't have um, you know, as you get older, you know, we had Ted Nugent on the show a few weeks yeah. ago, and he said that he just can't take the traveling. Even Stephen Whiteman from Kicks is like, I can't get on the buses, the hotel, uh, you know. <laughs> Check it. The airports, all that stuff. Yeah. I'm done with it. And Ted's the same way. You have no problem with it. I think inland travel, when I'm in Europe or in the, in the states, it's it's the overseas traveling and the waiting around. I've been to Europe five times this year already, and I'm going again next week. And you know, for me, it's it's as you get old, I think the travel wearing down, but the the shows and the meeting of the fans and all that stuff, it's amazing. So, so you still. Only the not only the voice of rock, but the hair of rock as well. What's going on with the hair? Your hair. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. I, you know, I, I think you, I told you this before. At the Hall of Fame in 2016, you remember this, guys. Uh, my hair was very short. I was the only man in the building with short hair. And I decided that day I was going to grow it out. And here we are six and a half years later with the, the, the wool is back. <laughs> Glenn, you got to get it to how you had it at the Cal Jam when it was like this big. And I'm, was... I'm trying, man. You know, it, it, it's like I, I don't try to do that. It's like my hair's different now, but that was a lot. I was almost 50. Can you believe 50 years ago? Well, speaking of that, you're going to celebrate 50 years I of am. burn and getting ready to go out on tour and, and highlight that record yes. with Ingve Malmsteen yes. on all the shows. Most of them, there's a couple, it's just you, but most of it's you and Ingve. So yes. so tell us about that tour. Are you going to be playing Burn in its entirety or just leaning on it more heavily? What I'm going to do, I'm going to select a group of songs from Burn. I, I do extended versions of these songs. Um, so you'll probably be hearing uh, five songs from Burn. There's only seven songs on the album. So, um, and then I'll, I'll do a couple of other songs from Mark Three and Mark Four. And I've been doing this run, guys, since May the second. We started in Gothenburg, and uh, you know we're gonna run. Of course, you know the, the tour with the co-headline with my dear friend Ingve will run through uh, August 16th, Donaldson in New Jersey, and uh, to yep. se September 23rd in Clear Lake. Florida. So, so Glenn, Glenn, who goes on first uh, on that tour? You or there's, there's going to be, we've selected an opening band in every market. So neither of us has to open. Um, I believe I'll take the middle set. For me, I, I, I like that yeah. one. You know, a, I, I just want to do my thing and meet my people, have fun. Uh, Ingve and I are good friends. And along with that continues. So, We've been talking about this for quite some time. And Engve being a, a, a Richie Blackmore disciple, uh, you played with Richie, obviously. How, yes. how did that How did that come to pass that you guys would team up for this tour? Because it's an interesting pairing. It is. Now, uh, do you remember, fellas, uh, 2013, I did Marshall 50th in London with a selection of great guitar players. And Engve was one of those fellows. And he asked me if we could do Mistreated. And we did mistreat it with Brian Tishy, and it was pretty spectacular. So, and that, that 10 years ago, we, we thought about, well, maybe one day we could do uh, this together. We have the same agent in America, so here we are now about to embark on this beautiful tour. Glenn, what is it like for you to look back on Burn at 50? Uh, we were talking about it before you joined us. It's amazing how well the record still holds up. And it's incredible when you think a band like Purple, who are already legendary, of course, and then they lose a singer 
They lose a base player. You come in. You had been known from Trapeze. David comes in as a total unknown. But the album was so embraced, and it didn't seem like the fan base missed a beat, which is unheard of for that time because a lineup change back then really was yeah. a cataclysmic thing to a band. Here's two guys coming into a legendary band that were new. You were known right. somewhat, but yeah. David was not. But did that blow you away that the record came together so well and that you were accepted so well live? David came in after me about seven or eight weeks. I joined in sort of June-ish. I think he came in in July. Um, and we met down at the castle, the famous castle in, in, in uh, Gloucestershire near the Welsh border. Uh, with uh, Richie had only a little piece of mistreated and there was no other material and we and check it out we were in the crypt in the dungeon in this centuries old castle uh, about to to write this album called Burn and uh, amazing combination of two new well I wasn't new but I was like I've been touring America for three or four years David was brand new uh, but I think at that time we were all a brand new band, if you will. You got two new guys with three older members. I think it was looked at as a new band. Glenn, did you did you um did Trapeze play shows ever with Deep Purple, or did you just come in cold? No, but um they kept coming to see me and Trapeze at the Whiskey Gogo and the Marquee in London. I know you know what that place is. They kept coming to see me, and I became friends with with John Ritchie and Ian. Funny, I never made friends with Gillen and Glover back in the time. I should have really known what they were doing. But but no, they kept, they kept coming to see me. And I had no idea. Even the day they were going to ask me to join, they were going to ask me to join. So. so you think they were scouting you? They were scouting me for sure. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Glenn, um, the band, you just, w before you came on, we ran down some of our favorite Glenn albums of all the different groups and projects you've been a part of. So a lot of different stuff came up from the stuff you've done with Iomi to California Breed to Hughes yeah. Thrall, and including a couple of us had uh, one of the records you made very recently with the band you just left, The Dead Daisies. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering um, if you could tell the audience, how was your experience being in that band for a couple, uh, a few years and doing a couple records and your decision to move on from it? Well, well, David Lowy, uh, I met David Lowy in L.A. He, his manager called me in the early spring of 2019 to see if I would be interested in taking lunch with David Lowy at the Marquee in, in L.A. I met with David, a lovely fellow, as you know, a, a great guy, uh, um, asked me if I'd you know, write some songs privately for the band. And I, I went ahead and wrote uh, four or five songs, which we know about Unspoken and Holy Ground and stuff like that. And we went into the studio in, at Sunset Sound in Hollywood and recorded those demos. And they seemed to have worked out great. And they asked me if I'd like to, to make an album with them and do some touring. And then, of course, I made the album and the pandemic hits and blah, blah, you know the rest. So but Glenn, your decision Glenn, to move on from it, was that always planned? Did you, did you just want to go out and do your own stuff now? Is that the idea? Um, I, I wasn't really thinking about doing anything other than the days. Uh, but in 2000, sorry, last November, we did a tour of the UK. Uh, and David took us into a room and said, listen, I want to take a break for uh, a good half of the year this year. Uh, and my mind automatically went, I, I don't want to take a break. Uh, I, I got stuff to do, you know. Uh, I can do some my own work with my own beautiful band. And so I had my manager, Jimmy, start booking shows. And that's what I've been doing since. You know? and, and by the way, I had a great time in the Dead Days. They're my friends. They're great guys. I had a lot of love, a lot of fun. I made two great albums with them. And I only want the best for them. I really only want the very best for them, especially David. He's a great, great guy. So, Glenn, you, on the Dead Daisy tour, at least one of them, you had a comedian open for you. How was that? We did. He was <laughs> fucking incredible. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, look, I mean, I, I've never seen Don do a stand-up before. So, you know, look, Don was, was you know, what am I going to say? He's standing right in front of me here. But, you no, know, but Don and I became really great friends. And we traveled with me and we had a lot of private dinners and dances together. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah, so Don's going to. Come and see me next week in. in um, yeah, I'm going to try to make it out there too. Come on, Jim. It's. It, I would love to come. I'm in Vegas though, Glenn. So I, I have to Eddie, catch you somewhere else. You know. No respect, Eddie. No respect. None. Thank I mean, Jim, Jim, I haven't seen you in ten years. I know it's been a long. I'm going to try to get down there. I'll probably. Come make on. It, but, 
Now, Glenn, Glenn, I, came, Glenn th- I came to your show at the Pony when you played yes, the you Stone did. Pony, and that was a purple show, it too, was. if I remember. And that it was Gloria. killer, and the band was killer. Thank you. It's the same band, new keyboard player. Um, I, look, Ed, Jim and Don, there's only so much, only so much time I've got to do the Burn album and the Legacy songs. Will Glenn Hughes do anything else other than this in solo? Uh, between you and I, I probably will in 2025 go back to being Glenn Hughes, the solo artist. So that's that's definitely on the cards. Yeah, Eddie, Eddie, you saw the 40th um, year celebration uh, of Deep Purple celebration, uh, which I saw as well. So I'm really excited for the for this this new Was version. Was that of 10 it. years ago already? Yeah. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. In- in- incredible, isn't it? It, it is took incredible. Jim 10 years to grow that beard. I can see that. Look at Jim. I can't look at Jim. I can't even recognize him. Hey, Glenn, you know, I, I got one like more you're thing. You're growing out your hair. I'm growing out my beard. Well, yeah. I, as men do, you know. Exactly. Yeah. Don's growing yeah. out his pubes. Well, I, I, I yeah, retro. He's dying them, too. Of course. Uh, I'm losing my hair. Um, uh, Glenn, um, I'm curious about this. So we went over a lot of different stuff uh, as far as your catalog before you came on. Yeah. Whether it's California Breed, whether it's Hughes Thrall, whatever it may be, your solo records, is there anything in your catalog? Can you give us like one or two things that you felt should have been like connected way more that should have like a record you thought, man, this is going to really do something. And it just for whatever reason didn't get on people's radar because we were talking about California Breed and how much we love that record. Yes, I, I do too. Yeah. No, so, I mean, no. is there something for you that you could add as far as a, a record or a project that you just felt should have had more legs? I've got two optional answers for you. Now, before all this crazy music business started, before the, the late 60s and early 70s, when I put Trapeze together when I was only 17, uh, Medusa and You Are The Music, those two albums mean so much to me. Um, and they did fairly well. Uh, they didn't break ground like we ZZ Top. Uh, we were label mates. They, they broke through, and we almost did. Trapeze was the the artist I would love to have broken completely through. Now we were doing five to seven thousand seat venues when I left to join Deep Purple in '73. Now the other album, or you know, I think California Breed was a great album produced by, by Dave Cobb and Andrew watched them very well, as you know, and Jason, my dear brother. Uh, we had a great combination there. Uh, it's a, unfortunately, we couldn't continue without Jason. So, yeah. The, I, the Iomi Fused album was one, oh. the one I picked. <laughs> you can that keep just... calling them out. Now, again, do you know, Eddie, Jim, and Don, listen, do you remember, I think it was 2007, and then Sharon put the band back together and Geezer's album was shelved and Fused was shelved. And so Sharon, you know, got the band back together and Tony, I, and Geezer had to suffer from that, I guess, you know. Mm-hmm. Hey, uh, Glenn, let's, uh, yeah, I was in LA just a couple of days ago and I saw uh, uh, Joe, Joe Bonamassa yes. came to my radio show. We spent an hour or so together and he was leaving to go see you yes. to yes. do some recording <laughs> yes. at, at, on the black country communion record. Yes. I'm so yes. excited. Yeah. There's yeah. a new record coming. Yeah. Joe told me a little bit about it on the air. What can you share about the record? Well, I sang five songs the other, the other day and Joe came down and helped me finish the last one. I love that guy so much. We're all my, I'm going to finish it tomorrow. Uh, Joseph's on the road now somewhere in California, I believe. Uh, he's doing Red Rocks this weekend. Um, the album is going to be, pretty much done in the next I, I i'm finishing tomorrow then we're going to mix it and blah 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 you know uh, look guys the we all i think we all love bcc it's a recording band let's cut to the chase it's a great recording band we all want bcc to tour i think we all want to tour but it's difficult with all these windows not opening so i can't say there's going to be show here a show there joke talked about a few shows in Europe and a few shows in the USA. Do we want that to happen? I believe we do. And I hope that will happen. Yeah. He sounded like it would. So fingers crossed. Yeah. I, I, I spoke to him right after you saw him and he was, he, he was, you know, look, I've known Joe for so long and he, we're on the same page and um, I, he might be a workaholic. You, know, you, you think so, oh, yeah. you know, look, look guys, I, I stutter when I say this to you, we all want that band to tour, but we've got to really nail it down and make it happen. So 
hopefully this is the album that will make it happen. All right. You never know. Yeah. No. Hey, Glenn. Hey, I never. I don't think I ever heard the story about um, you know because you dubbed the voice of rock. Uh, who, <laughs> who coined that term originally? Okay. I did a, a song with the KLF in 1991. Uh, the KLF were the biggest uh, trippy dance club act from the UK. They had a song with Tammy Wynut, which number one in Europe. So they had me come in to do this trancey, actually it's Ace of Spades kind of guitar part over this rap. The guy was rapping and me singing, what time is up? That stuff, you know, and it went to, like it was top five all over Europe. So they said, we, we don't want to call you Glenn Hughes. We want to call KLF featuring the voice of rock, Glenn Hughes. <laughs> so it's been 31 years since I've been called that. Thank you to my friends, KLOF. And all, all my friends, some of them your friends, they call me the voice of rock. I think it's quite hilarious, but <laughs> yeah. I've got a lot to live up to. So hopefully I will continue to carry that mental well. No, you do it well. That's for sure. We can all say that. It's remarkable what you sound like still Thank after you. all these years. It's better than ever. It truly is. You guys got anything else or should we let them go? No, I, I got to well, say, let's do our, uh, let's I'm do so, our I'm so, it's, I'm so great to see you fellas all in the same cubicle. <laughs> uh, I've missed you. I missed the show we used to do. We, we all loved it. And I saw to Don last week. It's so great that you can, I know you love each other and stuff, but it's great to see you actually doing it again whatever any genre you want to do it i love you and i can't wait to see all of you uh very kind of you thanks we love you it's too. fun to just yeah. yeah we love you too it's just fun to reconnect and do this once a sure. week and you know we all hope the old show comes back we would love it but yeah it's, it's out of it. our hands so in the meantime just something to do to reconnect with all the artists and yeah. reconnect the three of us every week sure. should we do this versus that with glenn yeah pardon me no, let's do that so oh, yeah glenn, we, we should tell glenn what we're doing yeah go ahead don we want yeah. to do us. We want to do a, at the end of the show. We do a segment, this versus that, and we pit two musical things against one another. And of course, since you're our esteemed guest, okay, am I going to get in trouble here? No, we're going to put you, don't you don't on the spot pick if you don't want to. Yeah, we're we'll, probably going to be put on the spot, but you know, okay, we're, we're going to pick between uh, two people that okay. you've worked with in the past, oh, and uh, <laughs> this week we decided this versus that. You got to choose one. Best Glenn Hughes guitar player, Richie Blackmore or Tony Iommi? Oh, that's a really tough one, guys. I mean, all right, let us, let, Glenn, let us go first and then you can please. figure out your answer. Yeah. yeah. Then you can tell us the right answer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because you play with him, but this is just, um, well, this is I, I got to go with Tony Iommi. I'm a huge Sabbath fan. I mean, you know, Blackmore's great and stuff, but I just, uh, the stuff you did with Iommi. Thank you. Was phenomenal. I'm going with Tony. Thank you. All right. That's one Who's for Tony. Next? Okay. Who's next? Me? I'll go. Eddie. Yeah. So first of all, Glenn, I'll take the blame for this because this was my idea. We had to come up with something. <laughs> we were going to do uh, Burn versus Stormbringer, but we had oh, done that before okay. Okay. with something else. So I we went with this, and I it's so in, obviously two incredible, iconic yeah. players. I am going to give the slight personal nudge to – Tony, because I, I, I'm just going to be honest. I know Tony. He's a friend. Uh, we're mm. in touch. Selfishly, I love him. But also, he, he, as brilliant as Richie is and as brilliant as the riffs that Richie came up with are, Tony is the all-time riff king. Mm. Nobody mm. sounds like Tony. Yeah. And, um, you know, you and Tony are like, well, look, yeah. we could find a picture of the two of you together. We couldn't yeah. with you and Blackmore together no, in no, 50 no, no, years. No. <laughs> so we're, I'm going Tony. He, he never wanted his photograph taken with me, I guess. So. <laughs> what, about you, what about you, Don? Yeah, Richie didn't like you with the short hair. Um, no, I, I guess not. So listen, I, you got, I think you guys got it all wrong because this is, this is best Glenn guitar oh, player. Not who you like better. It's the best Glenn guitar player. And that person, and we didn't even mention the DEP sessions, which are brilliant with Tony Iommi. But the right answer is Richie Blackmore. You know, the, 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 the two albums you did with Richie, can, can, the impact that they've had on the, not only the scene, but music, countless musicians for the last 50 years. The mm -hmm. stuff you did with Tony was great but the lasting impact of what you did with Richie okay. makes Richie the best 
Glenn Hughes guitar player. It's a great point to put it way to put it yeah. on. And when you put yeah. it that way, yes, impact wise, there's there's no yeah. comparison because those yes, two correct. records, right? And, and of course, Glenn's going out playing Burn, which of course was Richie. Yes. But yeah, Glenn, chime in, say what you'd like. I, I take the friendships aside. I've known Tony longer than I've known Richie. I know Tony from 1970. Uh, close, close friends. We are from the black country where Tony is from. Um, look, let's talk serious here. Blackmore, uh, early 70s, early 70s now, 70 to 76, if I, if I may be, was absolutely criminally un unbelievably amazing. I think Tony has always been the Rift King and will continue to be, and he's kept a good, clear vibe all the way through. Um, it's a tough decision for me. Uh, I think those albums are made with purple are, well, you know, you tell me, I mean, that they're, they're, they're wonderful pieces of work, but the stuff I made with Tony, especially Fused, you know, that's my, one of my favorite albums. This is a tough one. Can I split them or can I just say what? It's got to be one. Well, or... You're not you're not out playing Fused in its entirety. <laughs> no. he's, doing, he's doing that next tour. <laughs> and I, 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 without getting into trouble, you never know with me and Tony. You, with three albums in, you never know. Yeah. Um, um, I, I, oh, guys, I mean. Don't I'm, make them pick. Yeah, you can't do it. You don't have to, Glenn. When, when I listen to songs like Sail Away, the, the, the Richie, the Riff, and, you know, we all know about Mistreated. You know, it's, it's what like, about Dopamine, Glenn? Oh, God. <laughs> what, what about I Go Insane, for God's sake? Okay. Yeah. I mean. I look, Love No Stranger to Love on Seventh Star. That's great. Yeah. I played with everybody. I uh, played with more guitar players you can imagine. But those two classic rock giants, in my opinion, I tell me if I'm wrong. Page, I owe me and Blackmore in the early to mid 70s were the holy trinity, you know. So I've played Jimmy's a friend of mine, but I've never played with him. But I've played with the, the other two buddies. Hey, All Jimmy right. Page needs a singer, he's been he's been <laughs> knocking around for 20 years trying to figure out what he's going to do. Somebody get you got to get in touch with him, you got to knock that off your list, Glenn. You'd be perfect. I don't have a list anymore. I I don't I, I've never waited for the phone to ring. I'm so grateful. But the question the answer is it's a real tough one because I'm it's not that I'm just promoting burn and doing it. The songs are amazing. I'm really enjoying playing them again. But what I did with Tony is is, is valid in my opinion. All right, just say it's a tie. It's then a tie. Then you're out. <laughs> there, there you go. go. Let Perfect. him off the yeah. hook. Yeah. yeah, but you got to get Jimmy Jimmy on the case. So, again, get Jimmy Page in the mix with you. Uh, you, you, you know, I'm look, there's nothing you guys don't know. Uh, but right now, all I'm, in, all I'm interested in is my work with my band as a side project, Black Country Communion, and the rest is rock and roll history. Yeah. All right. All right. Well, on that note, perfect way to let you, uh, go and uh we can't thank you enough for doing this and i hope to catch you at one of those shows coming yeah. up everybody go see glenn and ingve it will be fantastic no doubt. Just, there's all just, the dates just a quick plug there's the dates everyone i'm looking forward to seeing you some of you i'm going to meet some of you in the thing i do i can't wait to stand in front of you and do what i do i've been waiting for this tour all year and it's going to be one hot one and i can't wait to spend some time with you peace and love that's awesome. Well, I'm going to line you up for my radio show. We'll talk next week on there. I'd well. love to. I'd Thank love to. Thank you for the time, man. It's always great to talk to you. Jim, you, see, see you when I can. Don, see you next, uh, was it? Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. 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 And Go you and Waltz. Jane are coming. You got to come and you got to come and do some stuff with me, Don. We're Is doing it? it. We'll talk. Yeah. We I love it. all of you. Peace and love. Be good, Thank Glenn. You, Glenn. Thank you, Glenn. See ya. There he is. Voice awesome. of rock. Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Don. Uh, thanks for watching that clip. If you'd like to see more stuff like that, uh, check out these clips right here. And, hey, why not uh, join up, become a member, hit that join button, and uh, you'll get access to exclusive content. Content? Content. Content? <laughs>